Welcome to topic two for channel hydraulics where we're going to talk about flow at structures and transitions. This uh, video will be provided in uh, three parts. The first part, this part will deal with specific energy, then we'll talk about hydraulic jumps and finally gradually varied flow profiles. But first specific energy and we're going to talk about, um, in addition to specific energy, we'll talk about the alternate depths and then we'll cover the Froude number, a dimensionless number that's quite important. To begin with, let's think about this situation of gradually varied flow. And imagine we know the discharge and the total energy head. So we know energy and mass transfer rate. Now remember that both energy and discharge are dependent on the flow velocity and the flow depth. So the question is, if we know discharge and energy, can we work out the flow velocity and the flow depth? And in particular, we're going to focus on the flow depth to start with. It turns out the answer to this question is really quite interesting and has implications for a number of phenomena in open channels, including hydraulic jumps. So can we estimate depth if we know energy and discharge? Firstly, let's define the specific energy, not the total energy, the specific energy, which is defined as the total energy relative to the, um, the stream bed, not, not some fixed date, data. So that's E, which is the sum of the kinetic term, the velocity term, and depth. And we know by mass conservation that the um, discharge per unit width is the product of velocity and flow depth. And we can rewrite that as velocity equals Q on D. If we substitute this for velocity in the first equation, then we get this equation, where the specific energy is um, the sum of a term related to discharge squared on depth squared plus depth. So we have three uh, variables in this equation if we consider gravitational acceleration is more or less a constant, um, and it would seem that for a a, give a known energy and a known discharge, we should be able to calculate depth. Well, let's turn this around. Let's think about this equation in terms of a fixed discharge. What's the relationship between specific energy and depth? Well, we can calculate that using um, this formula, which I've written again at the top of this slide. It turns out the relationship looks, looks like this. We've set the discharge at point 3. We've used this equation to calculate specific energy for a range of depths. And what we find is this minima in the specific energy curve, at a depth of around 0.2 metres. And above this um, depth, the specific energy increases and it actually approaches a linear function. And that's because this second term, the depth term, is dominating this first term. At low depths, uh, it also increases, this time with an inverse square function. And again, this is because this term don dom dominates the specific energy. So let's imagine the specific energy of the flow is one meter. Um, then the depth um, of flow could be one of two depths, in fact, to satisfy the requirement of um, a discharge of 0.3 meters squared per second. Remember, we're working in a two-dimensional framework here. The depth could be one meter, or it could be around 0.08 um, meters. So this, um, to understand this specific energy curve a little bit more, let's consider this example where flow, horizontal flow passes over a slight rise in the channel of height delta z. We, we know the specific, and, and we consider the specific energy and depth um, before the rise at uh, cross-section 1 and on top of the rise at cross-section 2. So if we imagine a cross-section one, it's um, E1, and the depth is uh, one meter, it's D1. 
as we go over the rise, the specific energy has to decrease by delta Z. Remember, the total energy remains the same, assuming there's no losses. The specific energy is defined relative to the bed, so the specific energy has to decrease by delta Z. That's the distance between here and here, E2 minus E1. So we shift to the left by delta Z. And that, that means we move down the curve um, this way, and the new depth is something like 0.886 meters. Right, so that's um, the specific energy curve, but really the interesting feature here is this minima. What is this energy minima, and why do we have one? Okay, so let's, let's now concentrate on the minima and think about what it means, firstly, mathematically. If we differentiate the specific energy curve, um, we get uh, this term, 1 minus q squared on gd cubed. And for the minima, this equals 0. So d d d equals 0. And at the minima, that means the q discharge squared equals gravitational acceleration times the critical depth of this minima cubed. Or the critical velocity at that energy minima equals the square root of gravitational acceleration times the critical depth. And it turns out that um, this um, square root on the side of the equation, the square root of gravitational acceleration times depth, is the wave speed, the, the, the travel speed, the propagation speed for a wave traveling on the surface. So what this equation means is that the flow velocity, u, equals the wave speed, the square root of gd. Now, this should be familiar. Flow velocity equals wave speed. That's the critical depth. So what we have here is critical flow conditions. So at that energy minima, we have critical flow. So again, critical flow at around 0.2 meters. And at higher flow depths, we have subcritical flow, and at lower flow depths we have supercritical flow. Next I want to introduce the non-dimensional number called the Froude number. Now the Froude number is calculated as the ratio of the velocity u to the square root of gravity times depth. Now this is the wave speed, so in fact this is the ratio of flow speed to wave speed. And at the critical flow condition, flow speed equals wave speed. So the Froude number is 1. So under this minima in the specific energy curve, at critical flow, Froude number equals 1. At supercritical flow, at lower depths, higher velocities, Froude number is greater than 1. And at subcritical flows, Froude number is less than 1. The Froude number is also equal to, or will also be conceptualized as the ratio of inertial forces um, to gravitational forces. Um, and you can refer to your texts for more explanations of that interpretation of Froude number. Now finally, another um, result just popped up here, which I wanted to talk about. Um, and this is important for a particular engineering problem in rivers. It's how do we measure discharge in rivers? And one approach to doing that is to create critical flow. And we use this equation to do that. I'm going to talk a little bit later on, but it's the, um, remember, it's, this is the, um, the result um, for the specific energy minima. We find that the depth is um, solely dependent on the discharge. It's, it's proportional to the discharge raised to the two-thirds. We'll come back to that relationship a little bit later on. Well, that's the end of part one um, on the specific energy um, and Froude number. 
In the next part, we'll deal with the hydraulic jump.